What is up, down, and sideways, you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Online. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. We got playoff action, LPL, LEC, regular season, not wrapping up in the LCK. It's It feels like it should be wrapping up, and then you think, Man, we still got like three more weeks over in Korea. This one happened. I don't know what break or anything that shifted things up that we are at this type of pace in the LPL, the LEC, the LCS, and we got the LCK dragging itself behind a little bit but they will catch up you better believe it and don't don't be thinking that there's no shortage of that drama that is still going to be going on in that lck let's go diving into the weekend recap we start with game five action in the lpl fresh off a heroic game five win edg match it up against tes in their summer playoff debut and rookie he sees to his side Jackie Love's there. He sees across the other way Uzi on the opposing team. And all of a sudden, he's transported back to 2018. And my guy was playing like peak IG across this whole series, but especially that fifth game. Oh, yes, sir. It is that Invictus Gaming 2018 champion Jace coming through out on that riff. Ain't no champion skin, but that Jace looking mighty clean piloted by rookie yes channeling back those type of performances clutch game five from top esports to seal the series get themselves into that next picture gain that advantage of that that opportunity that losers bracket will provide you if you fall down with this clutch victory coming through against this edg squad i gotta say things are good looking at the top esports side of it in that game five I'm not so convinced on that Skarner pick coming through for EDG. Yeah, I mean, really, all it did was set Jackie Love back 1,300 gold because he had to buy a QSS. This game really came down to that 2v4 dive that uh, Rookie is able to turn around with the help of Mark in that bot side that really got this snowball gold lead rolling. And across the whole series, the one huge positive and green you'd give in the way of EDG all they outperformed Wayward in pretty much all five of these games. It's a classic Wayward go all chat, say better top win. See you next time. And I think that this is kind of that continuing trend that we have seen this year where maybe you're looking at top esports and we're still feeling better about their power, where they're shaping up into that elite tier of the LPL. But you look at something like Wayward and you still can, you know, Ching Tan, whoever's going to be in that top side, you look at it and you say, both of them not performing to that type of level that should be that expectation, should be the power level from either these individual players or that role for top esports. And then you go to that flip side on EDG. And yes, there's been lots of talk about there's been things going on, but the development of Ale, this split, and to that leader for this team, I think really one of them in the top side really is a good sign for EDG. And if, and I mean, Ale had a great series, kudos to him, but if this is a huge liability for Wayward, you got Bin next for BLG. That's your next matchup. So it ain't getting any easier. And EDG side of things, it's not the end yet. They still got enough points from a deep run in spring that we're going to be seeing them in the gauntlet. And that's the important part because you're looking at this series. You're looking at that performance from Ale. You're thinking about, okay, building off of this, trying to continue that one into that gauntlet. And the other factor that is playing into this optimism for a squad like EDG that you get into this gauntlet, which, by the way, is going to be not so intense just like these playoffs are in the LPL. But seeing what we have there and knowing that Uzi is looking more like the Uzi that we talk about, the legend himself coming out on the rift, that will be a big bonus for this EDG squad in the gauntlet. Yeah, we got to see the vein, and we got to see some insanely hyper-focused comps around diving him. I know there was a few positional errors definitely out of him, but you can see the confidence coming back uh, week after week that we've seen him developing with EDG. So yeah, absolutely thrilled that we're going to get to see more games out of both Uzi and Ale and the rest of the EDG squad in that gauntlet run. Bounce back on both occasions for some LEC squads in the second week of playoff action. And we start with Fnatic, who we were so disappointed with their debut against SK. And, you know, this is a team we were psyched about, second best team in that regular season. And they really turned things around. We got to see the Noah Trimby confidence in that bot lane, picking some spicy stuff, humanoid, 
Still dying every now and then, but uh, Razork, Oscarin, and everybody turning things around. Mad Lions first, and then they got the redemption against SK. Didn't drop a game on the weekend. Yes, this is the Fnatic that we have seen, and it is very good and reassuring for these LEC and Fnatic fans to see this performance come through, see this bounce back after that slip up, because this is one of those things where you find yourself believing that th this type of performance, these results against SK, against the Mad Lions, that's the Fnatic that has been born, has been able to develop this split in this LEC compared to the fanatic that you saw in that one slip up that weakness that return to the stuff that we have seen throughout winter and spring that has been moved aside we are seeing this form as the more current more regular form of fanatic and as you mentioned seeing players like humanoid razork get involved in the good things going on for this team that is a positive sign heading further into these lec playoffs and it really felt like noah was kind of invisible in those sk matchups but whew. My man's Gale Force and N1v4 engaging on the Aphelios and surviving to tell the tale looked much more like Mr. 70KDA at one point in the LEC. Um, got the redemption, as I mentioned, against uh, SK. Mad Lions, no miracle run to be had this split. They're obviously still going to be alive for that season finals because they got so many points uh, from winning the last split, but... Didn't look great in that Fnatic series, not feeling super confident about them going forward. That it just kind of, you know, is a fluctuation for this Mad Lions team and where we've seen their connection, their synergy and how things have worked out. Because to me, that's one of their biggest secrets is, secrets of, and biggest strengths is when they've got that figured out, they're running all on that same train. It's a similar thing that we've talked about in many other points this year. Having, you can build up a deficit of talent based off of just all being on the same page, acting in accordance and all these things. And that's kind of what it has been for these Mad Lions. And you've seen it slip and stumble in this summer split, especially this past weekend. We'll see maybe the added buff, the true buff they need is the double loser's bracket. Whereas, you know, going to the entire season finals instead of the actual summer playoffs, maybe that's their secret, but it needs to be a big turnaround. Yeah, the, the, I don't want to run that close if I'm those mad lines for that one. Just the way things play out when you dig yourself into this type of hole, this type of position. Still having those advantages, having that little bit of a boost from when they did get on that hot run in the spring split and get to go to MSI and everything else. Odds are not looking very favorable still for those mad lines, given the shape of the other squads we're going to talk about in the LEC. Not to be outdone by Fnatic. Team Heretics also had a super impressive 4-0 bounce back. First against Koi, followed up by Team BDS. And the most shocking sentence of the weekend is, Evi is solo killing Adam. That that actually happened on the Rift. Surprising. Very surprised to hear that one coming through. And I gotta say, not impressed. Still not impressed with the gameplay coming across from Evi, but it is at least acceptable it's at a point where it is not being one of these big detractors this big hole that needs to be repaired with the proper gameplay proper results coming through from the rest of this lineup when you're talking about what went right for heretics big one for me right in that mid lane it is this fateo transaction adding him into this team how he has performed this split and now rising up in performance as we get into these clutch playoff times that's what we're talking about big time money fateo I know AP Kaisa is a little bit busted, perhaps a bit overtuned at the moment, but this guy makes it look like it is five champions in one. He was so clean on it. The Ari performance was fantastic. We said earlier, even when Heretics were losing some games, this is a guy I want to see compete internationally. He's back at that MVP level, and the fact that now you got Heretics finishing top four with him coming over and somehow Excel with him leaving that squad also in top four. It's insane, man. The end of the picture where we've got what we're left with in the LEC is G2, a squad that didn't make it into the winter playoffs and then and the squad that didn't make it into spring playoffs and then a squad that didn't make it into winter and spring playoffs is the way it works out. A truly unexpected in the LEC. But, uh, you know, Heretics, if Evi can get even a little higher, you know, even the level that he was at this weekend, because 
Flacid, Yankos, Viteo, and even Mercer, the engages this weekend, are all playing at such a high level that this is a team you can talk about making a run, maybe even to finals. I want to make sure that we're giving props over to Flacid. That is the other member that really deserves some positive stuff to talk about him and what he is doing. That attitude, that hunger, and that aggression that he has brought to this role. It's, you know, you, you don't want to use this as a negative type of comparison, but you're looking at what we had for this team with Jack Spectra and kind of pushing up on it. And you could see that potential, but it was never fully utilized and pushed forward on this Heretics team. Can't say the same about Flackett. I think he is getting that maximum level with this squad, and they are certainly getting a couple of nice gifts, as in some W's from Mr. Flackett putting out that damn. Yeah, I think the biggest difference is just play style and how aggressive. Flackett is in lane and during these team fights he draws so much pressure gets things started as that AD carry who's not af afraid to be stepping forward at times even flashing forward and of course Yankos continues to be I mean one of the premier junglers in the LEC it's just now he's finally getting some help from teammates oh it's fantastic because this type of performance this type of glimpse of that career that we know of Yankos it was always there with heretics he stepped in committed and ready for this job it is fantastic to see that the other pieces have finally kind of been shaped around come around uh, what he can do and we are seeing this team thrive in the lec so now fanatic and heretics both finishing top four means vitality is ousted eliminated not even gonna be in these season finals, 0% chance of them making Worlds, which is an absolute disaster split for them. And whoever loses out of Heretics Fanatic, also no chance at these season finals, which means this is the most high stakes series of the year in the LEC. This is what we've been promised. This is what they told us. This whole year would shape up to the type of drama that could exist as we get into these later parts and things are figuring and falling out just the way that you mentioned. Hell yeah, we're going to get some intense games in the LEC for these ones. I cannot wait. Give me these matches. Give me the drama. Let's serve it up. I feel bad because I kind of want both teams to win. You know, they've had good redemptive arcs for both of them. So sad we'll have to say goodbye for the year for one of these squads when they match up next weekend. No more. Are there any undefeated major region teams we saw this peaking kt rolster coming roaring ahead to this 13 and 0 gen g matchup didn't expect them to absolutely smash them 2-0 though mark oh man you because you were in the belief category of mr bdd in the Oof. mid lane holy what a time that we get to talk about this and i mean what a great example of what these LCK ultra elite mid laners can do. And yes, I'm slapping BDD right up into that category again with the way things have been going for KT Rolster. Fantastic job in this series by him individually. And then again, I want to be looking at the rest of this KT Rolster lineup starting in that top side. Mr. Keen. Oh man, looking like a might be making some changes to that Asian Games roster if I were you about thinking about Keen as the starter. And how about, how many times have people said Cuz's career is dead? He's washed at least, you know, four or five different splits. I feel like people have talked about that for this guy. Hasn't gotten the respect. Another incredible series out of him. He's just walking up, stealing dragons from Peanut, knocking people off the rift with the Poppy ulti. He had an incredible series. Genji as a whole, definitely an off day. Did not look like they were at their normal level, but... I mean, a lot of that's got to be what KT was throwing at him. I think it's a, you know, somewhere in there is a healthy combination of the two. That this was Gen G on a suboptimal day. That they just, whatever was happening, maybe someone had apple juice instead of orange juice in the morning. Who knows what it was? Something was a little bit different and a little bit off for that squad compared to what came through. That, that you know, enthusiasm and energetic type of start coming out from the KT Rolster. You could tell. They were hyped up, motivated, and focused in on this matchup and get this as that opportunity to not only the throne, Gen G, but to usurp him and take that seat for yourself towards the top and say, you got to be considering us as the best team in the LCK. And, you know, we were talking about Gen G look primed and ready to maybe set another game score record in the LCK. And KT says, no, 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 
This summer split is for KT Rolster, and right now it absolutely looks like it is. Lahens had some fantastic Alistair engagers. This whole split, you can talk about this KT roster top to bottom, everyone performing well, but still the standout is they seem to be a hive mind. They're all on the same page. When someone goes for an engage, there is no hesitation for the rest of the squad to back them up. And that to me, when you get this team at that ultra instinct peak level, is I'm looking at that bottom lane duo of aiming in the hands. And when they're able to be fully in sync and really operating, really getting it together, you smash that into the rest of the team being in that type of coordination. That's how you get that secret sauce for KT Rolster, where usually the KT name, hectic team fights, they're gonna find some way to blow it and lose it. Uh-uh, not this KT Rolster. These guys are different. They're getting the job done. They're finding miracle fights that they have no business winning, turning them around, but they definitely had the business winning. This one against Gen G. We started with the good side of things for the LCK because unfortunately, we gotta talk a little bit of OK Savings Bank Breon versus T1. The boys now drop to one and five since Faker left that starting lineup. Game one, you have an 8K gold lead that T1 ends up blowing for the boys to get back into it. And then the game three that they lose, they just get smashed. I don't know which loss is worse. Oh man, it's getting uh, some pretty bad and dark times for T1 for these players when you're examining obviously the results and how things are playing out. But really that conversation around the situation is that big dark rain cloud that's hanging over this team, these players, and, and the LCK as a whole, given what is going on in that inspection of what people are questioning now about what they knew about these players, about the organization. It's so tough to see these results, see these poor play come th come out from this team when you're referencing it back and going, okay, the experience, the results are almost all there for these players on an individual basis. How many times over the course of the last couple of years are we talking about Faker individually or are we talking about the rest of the team, the amazing things that they are doing, how they've risen up reinvigorated Faker and brought him this opportunity to play with talent like this. Talent like this is not dropping games and dropping the gold advantage that you had against OK Savings Bank. And I think the, the scariest part of all this is it's, it seems like these guys are losing confidence, which is up in, a, in anything competitive. When you lose your confidence, that is the riskiest thing and hardest thing to get back at times because yet yeah, these guys we're all world class in their own right. Remove Faker entirely, individually. You look at all four of these other starters and you were at one point over the last two years talking about them as being in the conversation for best in their role, not just in the LCK, but worldwide. And it feels like Guma is the only guy still playing close to that level. And, you know, individually, I'm looking at someone like Kyria, right? You know, when you're talking about that order of, you know, where that creativity, where the communication was in T1 when you had Faker there, Kyria was kind of looking like that next guy up, you know, starting to follow in the footsteps of Faker and what he's calling and seeing. This opportunity seems to be, you know, too much too soon type of thing to realize just how much, of course, what Faker is doing and his impact in that type of role. And then how much is being delegated at that point for someone like Kyria to step in to try and take control, take that initiate part of it. It's a difficult thing to ask and to learn on the spot and the fly type of thing. And that's what we're seeing, I think, as well, some of these struggles when you're looking at an individual and you're questioning, well, he's so good and all these, you know, he brings all this else to the table. Why are we not seeing that as the replacement to kind of fill the gap for when Faker's not here? It's not quite working like that. The timing's not working out like that. But again, you're running out of time. As T1, as you put more of these, you know, bad to pathetic results out there, it's going to keep fueling that conversation for people. And if confidence keeps getting taken lower and lower for some of these guys, the losses keep piling up, who knows what the mental's going to be, it becomes less likely that Faker's just going to come back to the lineup and, yeah, ah, everything's fixed and we're going to go on a deep playoff run to Worlds, right? My, my biggest problem here is, again, knowing and understanding, you know, what we're talking about, this mental type of situation that's going to come through, these doubts that might start to develop for T1 and these individual players is going, well, yeah, but if you had 
you know, a strong or a great coaching staff where you could mentor through and talk about this, or, you know, lessen it. Absolutely, I'd find a way to believe that there is that turnaround. There is a quick way for the team to get back up and running. Not knowing what's going on behind the scenes and knowing that it was the exodus of, of Bengi recently, I don't have that type of confidence that there is that infrastructure around, even for a big organization like T1. Worst time of the year to be dealing with things like this. You hate to see it. Hopefully there is that bounce back for playoff and maybe gauntlet in the LCK this split. Somehow, some way, with the performance that the Shy put on against NIP, Weibo Gaming won the series. It was four straight games of his ear for Xiaohu, and I think that's the main reason why they won, because it didn't have anything to do with the Shy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know why they won? Because Xiaohu's picking up that nice buff that RNG's eliminated. Oh, Uzi's eliminated. It's Xiaohu's time to shine. Let's go, buddy. He slaps on the Azir, and he is making some mech amazing moves out there on the Rift. Love to see those clean Shirima shuffles from him. And yes, covering a little bit for your boy the shy and that top side who let's just say was having a, a fun gameplay experience this whole time he was just drawing pressure and letting his other teammates excel which they did light also had a great series i'm not saying that was the plan out of the shy he's always going for that 1v1 outplay that was never meant to be but the rest of weibo did look pretty decent against nip i still i mean Matching up against LNG, I'm not feeling great about that matchup for them. I'm not, and especially after what we just saw from the Shy, but at the same time, it's, it's the Shy. You could have just seen that. That means it's a good series next, right? Exactly. It can be on the complete opposite end for someone like him. Weibo Gaming, they're still going to be that underdog. They're down against it, but this is, this is the important match that we always talk about in these LPL playoffs, you know every match is important every game is important yeah 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 this one is super important because this is the one that gives you that opportunity to fall down into that loser's bracket and for a squad like Weibo Gaming anybody in the LPL you're gonna see that inconsistency Weibo Gaming you better have that safety valve available for you. and you know you got marquee matchups across the board in this next one obviously gala and light have some history light used to be on lng replacement eventually there uh scout and xiaohu have only been going head to head for what seven years now in the lpl <laughs> oh this is a classic matchup coming through in the lpl yes can't wait xiaohu versus scout who's gonna get the azir that's the question here my Just man ban it the whole series you know and we're going to get something else boring coming out. Let's man. get some any matchups. Woo! Uh, what am I saying? This is the LPL. We're not getting boring. These guys are going to be cool. We're going to get something fun. We're getting AP Kaisa. Not as cool as it once was to say that a little <laughs> yes. bit. But hey, we're still going to be rolling with that yeah, one. Yeah, becoming a little toxic in the mid lane too. But it really did feel like Weibo had to show absolutely nothing in terms of you know specialty picks in that matchup against nip so hopefully they got plenty up their sleeves still for that matchup against lng but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people as always thank you all so much for watching and we will catch you on that flippity flip